Welcome in the second section of our course. In this section, we'll see how to optimize CPU intensive computations with Java programming language. So first, we'll be focusing on the aspect of forward iteration versus backward iteration. We'll see that order in which we are iterating over elements is important and has an impact on performance. Then we'll be comparing performance of different arithmetic operations in Java. So we'll see the performance of division, multiplication, subtractions, and so on. Once we will know that, we'll be speeding our processing with vector operations. So we'll see how to apply vector processing atop of our operations and we'll be compare different data types. Using JShell to test and prototype Java code will be covered in video 4. Finally, we'll be doing float versus double performance comparison. So we'll see how our operations that are using float are performing and also how double performance is looking. So here is the first video in which we'll be doing comparison between forward iteration versus backward iteration. So we'll be writing forward iteration code. So we'll leverage the state, JMH, and everything that we learned in the previous section. We'll be writing backward iteration code to be able to iterate in other direction. And finally, we'll be testing for both approaches using JMH tool and tools that we learned in previous section. So here there will be a couple new things, so let's focus on them at the beginning. So we can see that in the previous video, we encapsulated state into inner class. Here we want to create a state that is global for this specific benchmark. So we can use state at the class level. We can see that it is specified as the scope benchmark, so we can use it here. Next to we want to measure our results in the microseconds precision. But it is important because you want to use average time. Up to this time, we are using throughput, so we are measuring how many invocations we can achieve per specific time unit. So microsecond for throughput will be too low. We will have too low granularity. The comparison will be not so good. But if you want to measure average time, so we want to measure how long specific execution is executing on average, we can pick the microseconds because we will get the results in microseconds precision. Next, we are specifying parameter, and this is something that is also used by JMH to parameterize our test. When we have three parameters, it means that whole test toolkit will be executed three times. First time will be for length equal to 16348. Then we will execute our test for higher length, and finally, we will execute our test for 500,000 elements. So we can see that there is increase by the factor of 10 or even more. So we will use the length. Then we are specifying that we will have values, factors, and results. So those are things that will be needed. And is here is our setup. So we are iterating as many times as we have values length. So this is a length that is used in that parameter. So JMH will start that properly and inject that parameter for us. We're creating new random generator and we'll be generating random values. So we are injecting it to the values, we are injecting it to the factors, and we are getting values to results. It will be clear for you how to use it in a moment. So firstly, before we are examining for one and earn the backward iteration, we want to have some kind of a baseline. Baseline will be a simple iteration, one element at a time. So we can see that we are specifying that our length is of values like minus one, of course, because this is an iteration. Then we are specifying for loop, and we will be taking value from i element, we will be multiplying it by the factor from i element, and we will be putting it in the results. So this is a baseline of our computation, so there will be multiplication of two elements at the exactly the same index. This is very important to note. So this is our baseline. Let's see forward iteration and how does it look like. So code is similar, but there are some differences. For example, when we are calculating the value, if the index of our calculation is lower than 10,000, then we are taking values from i element. Otherwise, we are multiplying it by 2, and we can see that finally we are just doing the multiplication. But important is that we are iterating forward. So we will take a lot elements at one iteration, more than in the baseline, but we are going forward. So we are iterating one element and we are adding it. This element, this is very important. Then we have a backward iteration. So here we will be going from the last element 
to the first one in our array. So we are iterating in a backward direction. So here we are specifying that we will iterate from length to zero. And here we have minus minus, so it means that we will be going backward. So the ordering of iteration is different. Algorithms is exactly the same. So we are fetching more elements at once. We are calculating value and factors. We are putting it into results. So let's start test and see how baseline forward and backward is comparing with each other. We can see that outputs change really substantially. In the previous videos when we were using throughput, we get really high number and it was number of operations per specific time unit. Here, the result is different. Here we are getting average time. So on the average, the baseline in this example, or backward iteration or forward iteration, depending on your test that is running currently, is executing on average in nine microseconds per operations. So one operation is taking nine microseconds. We can see that for the backward iteration, when we are going back, it is 41 microseconds per operation. So we can see that it is something like four times slower. Finally, we'll get the results. We can see that we have tests for backward iteration, baseline, and forward iteration. And also it is multiplied by three. It is multiplied by three because we had three parameters. So if you remember at the beginning, we started from this parameter, this number, and this one. So we can see that time that execution is taking is proportional to the parameter that is specified. So the higher the parameter, the time is longer. But let's start from comparison. So we will compare backward iteration, baseline, and forward iteration. So we can see that for this first parameter, the forward iteration and backward iteration take more time. So we can see that almost 9.3 microseconds is executed per operation. Baseline was executed in 7 microseconds. Then for the higher, so we can see that for the backward iteration, for the higher parameter, so 65,000, we can see that it took 40 microseconds per operation, but forward iteration was substantially faster. So one iteration, one execution of the method took 36 microseconds. Baseline also was faster, it was 28. Then finally, for the highest parameter, so above 500,000 elements, we can see that backward iteration took 391 microseconds per specific operation, and forward iteration was faster, it took 340 microseconds per operation. Mason also was faster, but that was our case, so we wanted to test it. So we can see that when we have more data, our forward iteration is faster, so we should strive to iterate forward instead of going backward in our iteration order.